Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to talk about some of the new releases that are coming out in July. All right, everybody. Now, as per usual, before I get into the new releases, I have a couple of caveats. First, this video is in no way meant to be comprehensive. I typically focus on new releases that I personally am interested in or books that I think you might want to be interested in. Additionally, I am not going to be featuring any of the new releases that I already talked about in my July book of the month prediction video to avoid redundancy. So that video contains a bunch of other notable new releases that are coming out in the month of July. So if you are interested in knowing about more new releases, please feel free to check out that video, which I will try to remember to leave linked down below for you. Now we actually have quite a lot of new releases to talk about. It seems like July is going to be a heavy new release month. For this reason, I'm going to try to avoid reading full synopses when I can. If there is a blurb that I feel is going to give you a solid idea of what the book is about, I'm just going to read that because I don't want either one of us to have to sit here for hours learning about all of these new releases. We of course are going to start with the very first Tuesday in July, which is July 2nd. The very first book that I want to talk about is a book called May the Wolf Die by Elizabeth Hyder. It says, Nikki Serafino is enjoying the sunset from her boat in her beloved port city of Naples, Italy, when she discovers the body of a man in the warm waters of the bay. An investigator working as the liaison between local police and American troops, Nikki is certainly no stranger to violence and organized crime, but this case grows complicated when the victim turns out to be a U.S. Navy captain stationed at the nearby military base, and the autopsy reveals foul play. As she delves into the case, another body is found, and Nikki must face connections linking the murders to her own complicated history as a daughter of Naples. Smart and steeped in sun-soaked Italy, this propulsive mystery is the perfect summer binge listen. So this one really intrigued me because we don't often see like mystery thrillers set in Italy. This definitely seems like it's going to be very atmospheric. It even says here that it's for fans of Jane Harper. And if you know Jane Harper, she writes mystery thrillers set in Australia and they are typically very atmospheric. So I think that's going to translate well to this mystery. This one is not 100% on my TBR as of yet, but I did think it was intriguing enough to go ahead and bring to your radar just in case you might be interested. And then I actually only have one other new release that I wanted to talk about for July 2nd. It is the newest release by Robin Harding called The Haters. She wrote a book, I think it was last year, called The Drowning Woman or something to that effect. And I was hearing some pretty good things about it. So I wanted to go ahead and mention this one here in case you were a fan of that novel. It says Cameron Lane is living her dream life. After years of struggle and rejection, her first novel has finally been published. Her editor is happy, her teenage daughter is proud, and her boyfriend and friends are all excited for her. She's on top of the world until she receives a disturbing message from an unknown sender. Rattled by the accusations she finds there, Cameron swallows the sick feeling in her stomach and resolves to put the missive out of her mind. But when she checks her ratings on a popular book site, she finds a scathing one-star review. The reviewer is so articulate and convincing that soon Cameron's book is flooded with bad reviews. Could the reviewer be the same person who sent the ugly email? And why do they want to ruin her? As the online harassment creeps into Cameron's personal life, she vows to find out who's behind it. Is it really a disgruntled reader or could it be someone she knows? The troll's actions are escalating and when the abuse turns deadly, it will take everything Cameron has to unmask the enemy so intent on destroying her and finally learn why she's being targeted. Targeted. Okay, so very, very interesting there. I have never read anything by Robin Harding. I didn't read The Drowning Woman, so I don't really know what Robin Harding is capable of. If you have enjoyed Robin Harding, please comment down below and let me know if you think this might be worth the read because I'm intrigued, but I'm not 100% sold. All right, moving on into July 9th, a release that I am personally very much anticipating is the newest release by Kate Quinn called The Briar Club. I am a pretty big fan of Kate Quinn. I feel like I have loved for the most part everything that she's written with like the exception of The Huntress, but everything else has been a really solid historical fiction experience for me. And so I'm very excited to see a new historical fiction come out. This says Washington DC 1950. Everyone keeps to themselves at Briarwood House, a down at the heels all female boarding house in the heart of the nation's capital where secrets hide behind white picket fences. But when the lovely mysterious widow Grace March moves into the attic room, she draws her oddball collection of neighbors into unlikely friendship. Poised English beauty Fliss, whose facade of perfect wife and mother covers gaping inner wounds. Policeman's daughter Nora, who finds herself entangled with a shadowy gangster. Frustrated baseball star Beatrice, whose career has come to an end along with the Women's Baseball League of World War II and poisonous gung-ho Arlene who has thrown herself into McCarthy's Red Scare. Grace's weekly attic room dinner parties and window brewed sun tea become a healing balm on all their lives but she hides a terrible secret of her own. When a shocking act of violence tears the house apart, Briar Club women must decide once and for all who is the true enemy in their midst. Capturing the paranoia of the McCarthy era and evoking the changing roles for women in post-war America, The Briar Club is an intimate and thrilling novel of secrets and loyalty put to the test. That actually sounds very 
very different from what Kate Quinn has written in the past. A lot of her books are very much centered around World War II. So this sounds very interesting. It sounds like it's going to be extremely character driven. We have all of these women in this one house that kind of all build friendships, but it sounds like there's some secrets going on and something bad goes down and they kind of have to figure out what is going on. So count me in. I'm here for it. This is 100% already on my TBR and I am very much looking forward to it. Also coming out on the 9th is the newest release by Mae Cobb called The Hollywood Assistant. This blurb just says, offered a dream job in Hollywood with a famous director and his actress wife. An insecure woman becomes their personal assistant where their secrets and lies place her in the crosshairs of a murder investigation. So May Cobb is yet another author that I'm not really familiar with. I haven't read any of her former releases and this one is not necessarily intriguing me enough but I do know that a lot of people are really big fans of her work and so that's why I wanted to make sure that this one was on your radar. Another interesting thriller that is coming out on the 9th is a book called On the Surface by Rachel McGuire. It just says here a YouTubing cruiser couple sails the world living their best life until one of them goes missing and their whole world capsizes in this captivating psychological thriller perfect for fans of Something in the Water and Saint X. So it sounds like the two main characters it says they spend their time circumnavigating the globe aboard their 42 foot sailboat and they document it for their YouTube channel and then one of them goes missing after a boat party and then it kind of goes from there. So it sounds really interesting. I'm not necessarily in love with the idea of influencers being the subject of novels but I know that being an influencer can often come with a lot of drama and so it does make good book material. So it turns out that Rachel McGuire is actually a pen name for a collaboration between Rachel Graham and Lee Ann McGuire Whitlock. I'm not familiar with either of those two authors separately. I don't believe that either one of them is a debut but I do believe that this could be a debut for their collaboration. Again this was just another one that caught my eye. I've been seeing it going around so I wanted to mention it here. We also have the newest release from John Mars coming out on the 9th called The Family Experiment. Now I am not entirely sure I'm going to be adding this one to my TBR. I really really enjoyed The Passengers by John Mars but then I read The Marriage Act and I really hated it. I gave it like a two stars and it really turned me off of wanting to read anything more by John Mars in the future which is really disappointing because a lot of his books sound very interesting to me so I could potentially be convinced to pick up another book by him. I don't know if this one would be the one but I do know that he's very popular. He's very very well loved. It says some families are virtually perfect. The world's population is soaring creating overcrowded cities and an economic crisis and in the UK the breaking point has arrived. A growing number of people can no longer afford to start families let alone raise them but for those desperate to experience parenthood there is an alternative. For a monthly subscription fee clients can create a virtual child from scratch who they can access via the metaverse and a VR headset. To launch this new initiative the company behind virtual children has created a reality television show called The Substitute. It will follow 10 couples as they raise a virtual child from birth to the age of 18 but in a condensed nine month time period. The prize the right to keep their virtual child or risk it all for the chance of a real baby. Set in the same universe as John Mars's best-selling novel The One and the Marriage Act The Family Experiment is a dark and twisted thriller about the ultimate Tamagotchi a virtual baby. Tamagotchi okay I don't know I'm a little bit sold on that one that sounds really interesting. So if this is in the same world as The One and the Marriage Act it's also in the same world as The Passengers but this one I don't know I'm really intrigued by the whole Tamagotchi aspect and the virtual child aspect so this is one that I could potentially be convinced to pick up. I'm a little bit intrigued. All right and the very final release I want to talk about for the ninth is the newest release by Lana Ferguson called The Game Changer. Lana Ferguson is a name in the romance genre that I've seen going around quite a bit and so I know a lot of people are really anticipating this release. From what I'm understanding about this one it's a romance between a hockey player and a baker. The hockey player is Ian Chase and after a very public breakup becomes a PR nightmare for his hockey team. They decide to do a collaboration with Delilah Baker and Delilah happens to be Ian's best friend's little sister and Ian's best friend is also on the team and she has a local cable show that's all about baking so she's like a little baking darling and they're going to collaborate to try to save the team's image and kind of boost Delilah's ratings on her television show and it's going to go from there. It says Delilah's and Ian's teams thinks it's a true win-win situation gaining higher numbers for Delilah's show and casting Ian in a more positive light and viewers are eating them up like a cupcake sparking the idea to play up their relationship for the goal of good press. With more than just their careers on thin ice the line between what's real and what's for show begins to blur but one thing's for certain this PR stunt will either be a total game changer or leave them both totally pucked. Hockey romances right now are definitely all the rage and like I said I know Lana Ferguson is becoming a very beloved romance author so this definitely sounds cute sweet. There might be a little bit of fake dating involved I don't know but definitely the relationship is going to be the subject of PR stunt essentially and again it definitely sounds like it's going to contain a lot of tropes that a lot of people are really enjoying in romance these days so I definitely wanted to make sure it was on your radar. All right moving on into the 16th we actually have the newest release by Stephen Graham Jones called I Was a Teenage Slasher. It says 1989 La Mesa Texas a small west Texas town driven by oil and cotton and a place where everyone knows everyone else's business. So it goes for 
Holly Driver, a good kid with more potential than application, 17 and about to be cursed to kill for revenge. Here, Stephen Graham Jones explores the Texas he grew up in, the unfairness of being on the outside, through the slasher horror he lives, but from the perspective of the killer, Tolly, writing his own autobiography. Find yourself rooting for a killer in this summer teen movie of a novel gone full blood curdling tragic. That sounds really, really intriguing. Again, Stephen Graham Jones, another author I'm not familiar with. I haven't read anything by him in the past. It actually says that it's perfect for fans of Riley Sager and Grady Hendrix. So this might need to be my introduction into Stephen Graham Jones. But yes, again, Stephen Graham Jones, a very, very popular author. And so I know a lot of people are highly anticipating this new release. Also coming out on the 16th is the newest release by Tessa Bailey. It is the second book in her Big Shot series. I believe the first one featured golf and this one is going to feature hockey. Again, another hockey romance. This just says best-selling author Tessa Bailey returns with an all-new sports rom-com about a burly, surly single dad who falls head over hockey stick for his quirky live-in nanny. So you're gonna have a single dad hockey romance. So if you like Tessa Bailey, if you like those tropes, keep your eye out for this one. Another pretty popular romance author these days that is coming out with another book is BK Borison. She's coming out with the fourth book in her Love Light Farm series. This one's called Business Casual. Because this is the fourth book in the series, I really don't want to say anything about the synopsis of it. I'm pretty sure that these are companion novels that you can read in any type of order, but y'all know I don't want to risk revealing anything about the first three books by reading the synopsis. But BK Borison is an author that I've definitely seen going around. I know a lot of people have really been enjoying her stories. And so I wanted to make sure that y'all were aware that the fourth book in this series was coming out on July 16th. Also coming out on the 16th is a book called The Wilds by Sarah Pierce. This is the third book in her Detective Ellen Warner series. I believe this started with The Sanatorium and The Sanatorium was all the rage several years ago when it first came out. Like it was a racist book club selection. It was getting all of the hype and I was really intrigued to read that story. But then the longer that it was on my TBR, the more and more I started to see the Goodreads rating go dramatically down. I'm pretty sure that The Sanatorium has like a 3.3 or something similar on Goodreads. And so that kind of told me all that I really needed to know about the story. But if you do enjoy Sarah Pierce, if you have enjoyed her Detective Ellen Warner series, this is one that you're going to want to check out again coming out on the 16th. It says Detective Ellen Warner unravels the mystery behind the disappearance of a young woman in a propulsive new thriller from the New York Times bestselling author of The Sanatorium. Another one that I really don't want to say too terribly much about just because I don't want to risk saying anything about the first two books in this series. I just wanted to make sure that you were aware that this one was coming out. Final one that I want to mention for the 16th really caught my attention because it sounds like it's going to be like an isolation survivor type thing with rock stars. <laughs> it's called Only One Survives by Hannah Mary McKinnon and it says all drummer Vanna Taylor ever wanted was to make music. If that came with fame she'd take it as long as her best friend guitarist Madison Pierce was sharing the spotlight and singing lead. And with their new all-female pop rock band gaining traction soon everyone would hear their songs. Except on the way to an event the Bittersweets van careened off an icy mountain road during a blizzard leaving one member dead and another severely injured. In order to survive the frigid night, the rest took shelter in a nearby abandoned cabin, but Vienna's dreams devolved into a terrifying nightmare as, one by one, her fellow band members met a gruesome end and Madison simply vanished into the night. What really happened to the bittersweet? Did Vienna's closest friend finally decide to take center stage on her own terms? She doesn't want to believe it, but guilty people run. I don't know, there's something really intriguing about that synopsis to me. I don't typically love stories that feature rock stars, musicians, things like that, but that's primarily within the romance genre. I'm not entirely sure how well it would translate to the thriller genre, but you know I love a good wintry isolation thriller. I'm really intrigued by the fact that this is an all-female band. They've gotten into a terrible accident. They have to survive and one of them has gone mysteriously missing. So obviously like she's the main suspect at this point, right? So I don't know. There's something that really intrigues me about that premise and I think I might pick that one up. All right, moving on into the 23rd, I only have two that I want to talk about. The first is a really interesting horror novel by Sherry Priest called The Drowning House. A violent storm washes a mysterious house onto a rural Pacific Northwest beach, stopping the heart of the only woman who knows what it means. Her grandson, Simon Culpepper, vanishes in the aftermath, leaving two of his childhood friends to comb the small isolated island for answers. But decades have passed since Melissa and Leo were close, if they were ever close at all. Now they have to put aside old rivalries and grudges if they want to find or save the man who brought them together in the first place. And on the way, they'll learn a great deal about the sinister house on the beach, the man who built it, and the evil he's bringing back to Marrowstone Island. From award-winning author Sherry Priest comes a deeply haunting and atmospheric horror thriller that explores the lengths we'll go to to protect those we love. Off the bat, I see some buzzwords for me, including Pacific Northwest. I absolutely love a Pacific Northwest thriller because at the very least, I know that it's going to be extremely atmospheric and this doesn't seem to be any different. Sherry Priest, yet again, another author that I have no familiarity with whatsoever. It seems like most of these new releases are by authors that I've really never tried, never heard of, never read before. So I'm very much going to have to like rely on your opinions of these authors to see whether or not I should give them a try. I'm always interested in hearing your feedback about that 
that. So please feel free to comment down below. But I was just very intrigued. A mysterious house washes up on the Pacific Northwest Island. There's some things going on. A guy has disappeared and two friends are going to have to reunite to find out what happened. So I don't know. There was something very haunting about that. And so I definitely wanted to make sure it was on your radar because it is certainly on mine. And the last one for the 23rd is a book called The Last Thing She Saw by Nina Lauren. The blurb says this thrilling and intense psychological novel from the best-selling author of Girl Last Seen follows the residents of a rural town in Quebec as they grapple with long buried secrets coming to light after the discovery of a child's remains. So a flood destroys the historic center of a small Quebec town and a child's body is discovered. They are decades old and everyone thinks they know at once who they belong to. Nine-year-old Michelle Fortier who vanished in 1979 and her fate remained unknown until now. Stephanie O'Malley grew up in her mother's crumbling trailer listening to stories of Michelle's disappearance. Stories she once tried to turn into a podcast without much success. Although Stephanie left Marley 15 years ago and vowed never to return, she finds herself back with her tempestuous mother, Laura, her high school sweetheart, Luke, and the entire community in an uproar. While Stephanie struggles to separate the truth from wild rumors about witchcraft and townwide conspiracies, Laura is consumed by the strange feeling that all of this has happened before. But then a bombshell dropped. The body might not be Michelle after all. All right, definitely some very chilling vibes going on here. Of course, it's always very sinister and serious when you have a child's remains involved. You have a girl who went missing many years ago. No one knew what happened to her. They think that she's now been uncovered, but it might not be her. We definitely have a reluctant return home. That is a big buzzword for me. I'm very, very interested in this one. I had never heard of the previous release, Girl Last Seen. So I think I'm gonna have to look into this one because this is definitely one that is certainly on the top of my list to add to my TBR for the July releases. This sounds like right up my alley. So I'm very interested in this one. All right, and then moving on into the last release week of July, which is July 30th. Karen M. McManus has a new release coming out on the 30th. It's called Such Charming Liars. Karen M. McManus is a very popular young adult thriller author. She wrote One of Us is Lying, which has a very well-received Peacock adaptation that I really enjoyed watching. And I know that I've enjoyed her books in the past. And I do think that she's an author to go to if you are looking for YA thrillers or if you are just maybe trying to get into the thriller genre in general and you want something that's going to be maybe a little bit less intense than you would receive with an adult thriller. So this book actually features a mother-daughter grifter pair, which is interesting. It says, for all of Kat's life, it's just been her and her mother, Jamie, except for the 48 hours when Jamie was married and Kat had a stepbrother, Liam, that all ended in an epic divorce and Kat and Liam haven't spoken since. Now Jamie is a jewel thief trying to go straight, but she has one last job at billionaire Ross Sutherland's birthday party and Kat has figured out a way to tag along. What Kat doesn't know though is that there are two surprise guests at the Dazzling Sutherland compound that weekend. The last two people she wants to run into, Liam and his father, a serial scammer who has his sights set on Ross Sutherland's youngest daughter. Kat and Liam are on a collision course to disaster and when a Sutherland dies, they realize they might actually be in the killer's crosshairs themselves. Somehow Kat and Liam are the new targets and they can't trust anyone except each other. I very much enjoy the synopsis of that. I think that at the very least, it's going to be a good fun time, maybe a little bit of a twisty time. It seems like there are a lot of components that are woven together in there. So yeah, absolutely. If you have enjoyed Karen and McManus in the past, if you still read YA, if you enjoy YA thrillers, this is certainly one that you need to add to your TBR. Sherry LaPina actually also has a new release coming out on the 30th. It says, nothing ever happens in sleepy little Fair Hill, Vermont, but this morning that will change. And one innocent question could be deadly. What have you done? The teenagers get their kicks telling ghost stories in the old graveyard. The parents trust their kids will arrive home safe from school. Everyone knows everyone. Curtains rarely twitch. Front doors are left unlocked. But Diana Brewer isn't lying safely in her bed where she belongs. Instead, she lies in a hayfield circled by vultures discovered by a local farmer. How quickly a girl becomes a ghost. How quickly a town of friends, familiar faces becomes a town of suspects, a place of fear and paranoia. Someone in Fairhill did this and everyone wants answers. I also do love me a good small town mystery thriller. This definitely has those good vibes. You have a teenager that's gone missing. She's been killed. Somebody in the small town did it and everyone is a suspect. So it sounds like there's going to be a large pool of characters that you're going to have to remember, which I don't necessarily love, but I remember reading An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina and I feel like she did it pretty well. Like you were able to keep everyone in line and understand their place within the story. So I feel like she could do this one very, very well. And this is another one that I certainly am intrigued by. Another notable author has a new release coming out on the 30th. It is Kimberly McCright's newest release called Like Mother, Like Daughter. It just says here that Like Mother, Like Daughter is a thrilling novel of emotional suspense that questions the damaging fictions we cling to and the hard truths we avoid. Above all, it's a love story between a mother and a daughter, each determined to save the other before it's too late. So what I'm liking about the synopsis of this is that it sounds like it's definitely going to have a complicated mother-daughter relationship. So there's something going down. Maybe both of them are hiding secrets. Both of them are trying to save the other. Maybe there's some tension between the two. Maybe they've been estranged. I'm not entirely sure, but I do love books that explore the mother-daughter dynamic. I don't necessarily know if I will pick this one up just because I've read a few Kimberly McCrites in the past and they haven't really done much for me, but I 
do know again that she's a pretty well respected thriller mystery author and I do think her new release is worth noting. All right and then the very last book that I'm going to talk about in this video is actually a romance. It's the newest release by Elena Armas called The Fiance Dilemma. It says Josie Moore has given the opposite sex and love plenty of chances. Four exactly if you count all of her failed engagements and five if you include her no longer absentee father. Nonetheless when the influential man decides to announce his retirement with a splashy magazine piece and Josie learns that her romantic history isn't great PR for the family she jumps at the chance to offer a solution. Matthew Flanagan is in the mud literally. Not only has he been fired from his job but after taking a wrong turn on his way to Green Oak North Carolina his car is stuck. So he grabs a duffel bag with his essentials and goes in search of a place to crash until he gets his life and vehicle back on track. But instead he stumbles upon his best friend's sister Josie greeting him as her fiance. What starts as a big misunderstanding quickly turns into a fake engagement with Matthew playing the role of the doting fiance as he and Josie are swept into a PR whirlwind. The ring on Josie's finger makes her stomach turn but she knows this is only temporary. They have rules in place and one of them is that no matter what there will be no exchange of I do's. But that's easier said than done as lines soon start to blur and the rest of the small town comes to believe the fifth fiance is truly the one. So once again you're visiting some of the same standard romance tropes that you're seeing a lot. You have a fake engagement, you have a PR stunt, and you probably have of course these two main characters who are going to absolutely fall in love. It also sounds like you have a best friend sister situation going on in here so it might be a little bit taboo as well. So if you have enjoyed Elena Armas's romances in the past this might be one that you want to pick up as well. All right everybody that is it. Those are just some of the notable releases that are coming out in July that I wanted to have on my radar or that I thought you might want to have on yours. As per usual if there are any new releases that I've missed in this video or the book of the month prediction video that you want to share with others please feel free to leave those in the comments below and help other people out or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty go ahead and leave me an engagement ring emoji in honor of all the fake engagement or fake dating tropes that we have going on in the romance genre these days and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already I tend to post two videos a week one on Wednesdays one on Sundays and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms which you'll always find linked down below along with any books that I might talk about in a video. Until next time y'all. Bye.